Hello. Welcome, and let me give you a quick overview of an analog to digital converter. But first, the um, question might to, we might address is what's the motivation for this? Why would we want to do this? Well, let me give you an example. This is what my senior project in electrical engineering, we um, had, had this sort of input where I could play a tone, uh, any, any instrument would play um, a certain note, and it would go into this um, breadboard and go into the computer, and the computer would, would come back and tell you what note that you're playing. So um, sort of a tuner, right? And in order to do this, um, in order for the computer to process that signal, it's got a, a computer works with zeros and ones, right? That's, that's all it kind of knows. So it can't, it, you can't just input directly into the computer this, um, this analog signal, say you're playing an A note at 440 hertz. Um, you can't just input that 440 hertz signal right into the computer. It's not going to know what to do with it. It needs it converted into zeros and ones so that it can do its thing and, and process it and, and give you back that, that, that tuning um, information that, that you want. So that's, um, that's sort of one application. I mean, there's all kinds, you can imagine there's tons of applications for this, but that's kind of the one that um, comes to my mind. Um, but in order to explain this, let me get, just go ahead and show, say we took a little, say we had that incoming signal um, and we just like, took a little snippet of it and what, would, what that little snippet would be like if we converted it um, from the analog to digital. So let's go ahead and show up here a um, analog signal. All right, so nothing fancy here, just a signal. And we'll say this is sort of the amplitude on this side, we'll call this an analog signal. And on this axis over here, we've got time. And we want to convert this. So the first thing we want to want to do is sort of just um, discretize this into se into separate um, chunks on the x-axis and our y-axis. So on the x-axis is like different times that we're going to sample it. And let's just say we want to sample it at, at one millisecond, and then at two milliseconds, and three, and four, and five. And if we wanted to do that, um, we might see a grid that kind of looks like this, where I got these these lines and these different sections that I'm trying to look at. Um, but we're also going to want to discretize that in this in this y direction. Um, so that if, we, if I'm looking at a certain section here in the middle and I want to know what, what value that's at, I'm going I'm to have to discretize that. Okay, so now I'm showing these, this, um, this grid in, in both directions. And let's go ahead and assign these some values. So this is a time here, so we're going to call that um, one millisecond, two milliseconds, three milliseconds, four milliseconds, and five milliseconds. And over on this side, we'll call these are going to be different levels. So we'll say this is um, zero, just all sort of um, relative values here. We'll say that's zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven up here. Um, but the thing is, is we're going to we're going to um, make this into binary because that's what computer gets, right? It knows zeros and ones. So we, if we change this into binary, this is actually going to be. If we say we went three bits, three digits, this would be. 0, 0, 0, this would be 0, 0, 1, this would be 0, 1, 0, 0, 1, 1, 1, 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, 1, 1, 0, and 1, 1, 1. Or this is the, num this is the number of 4s, this is the number of 2s, and this is the number of 1s. Um, so if you think about, if I look here, if I add these up, I'm taking a 4, and I've got no 2s, and I've got 1, 1, so 4 plus 1 is give gives me 5 here. So this is the, the binary representation of it. Okay, so now we've kind of, we got our grid, you know, that's the um, hard part of just setting this up. And now let's go ahead and just, just try to analyze this at each block. So we we'll look at this first one millisecond here, and we look at kind of where that signal is at this time. You'll notice it's closest to this three line up here, which is our zero one one. So that, what that's going to do is um, correspond to this zero one one signal that I'm going to want to send over that time frame. So let's just do another axis down here. It's along the time axis and just separate into three different bits for each of these sections. Okay, so not the most beautiful plot here, but I've just got kind of dividing this up in, into different time chunks here. Okay, so now let's look at this first block between zero and one milliseconds. If we look at where that function is, um, it's right about here, and you can see it's closest to this three value. So we're gonna go ahead and, and you input that th this value, uh, three value for over this time block here, and that three value in um, digitized here is gonna be zero, one, one in binary. So what we can do is start that first um, one off with zero. So this corresponds to zero, and let's say this corresponds to one. It looks like this, zero, one, one. So this is our digital signal down here. And if we go ahead and kind of, we can kind of plot out what this looks like up here, where we sort of um, discretize this whole value for that first one as, as a, as a um, 
as three for that whole block. So you notice we're losing some accuracy as, as we do this, but we're just trying to, um, admit perhaps this, this will be good enough for wh what we need it for. So the next we can do is look at this next section over here between one and two milliseconds. And you see the functions up here, and that's going to be closest to that six value. So that's why we assigned the six, that one, one, zero. So we got one, one, zero for that second interval. This third interval here, we're a little bit higher. We're closer to seven at the top. And that seven corresponds to one, one, one. So we're going to go ahead and do a one, one, one over that time period. Over this time period, it's getting lower. And it looks like this is going to be closest to five, which is one, zero, one. So we got one, zero, one. And our last time block here, it looks like that's going to be closest to four, which is at one, zero, zero. So one, zero, zero. So you can see what we've, what we've done here is we've, we've taken this analog signal and we've converted it into this digital sig signal, just zeros and ones that the computer can crunch. Um, but if you kind of compare these graphically up here, you see that maybe this isn't the best depiction. It's not the, you know, we could make it more accurate if we wanted to. Um, if we had the bandwidth for it and the storage to do it, we could. So a um, couple things that you could do. First, you could increase the frequency of your sampling rate. So instead of just sampling every millisecond, we could sample um, you know, every quarter millisecond. And that might look like this. OK, so now we've upped our, um, our sampling. And you can tell this is a bit more accurate. Um, another thing that we could do that we might, might, you might also imagine is increase the number of bits. So right now, we're at three bits. So we have um, two to the three levels. So this is equal to eight. So you notice we'll have, you know, um, zero, we have uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight different levels here. And if we wanted to increase the number of levels here, we could go to um, four bits, which would be um, two to the fourth levels, which would be um, 16 different levels here. So we can get a little bit more accuracy that way. And that might look something like this here, where th you can see it's um, you can see it's a bit more accurate, particularly on this side where we've got more steps, and so we can we can more accurately kind of um, depict what that analog signal is if uh, we got more bits that we're working with. Um, so that is basically the the real basic core of what analog to digital conversion is. Um, there's a lot more that goes to it, but that's kind of just the basics of how we can get like for so for example this analog signal of a of a of a A note and convert that into zeros and ones that our computer could crunch and then get back to us with what, what note it is. So I um, hope that was helpful. And until next time, take care.